Thank you for tuning in, this is Watch Eric. On this celebrity watch review, I'm gonna be going over who may be considered the best basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan. All right, so the first thing I wanna mention about MJ is that he has actually a very eccentric watch collection. I would say he's more of the, on the eccentric spectrum of watch collecting because he doesn't like normal watches. I would say the most normal watches are the ones we're gonna first discuss, and those are the Rolex. So for Rolex, he has a Sky Dweller stainless steel with the blue dial. Of course, he's got the blue dial. Something like that runs $24,000. He also has a GMT yellow gold with the green dial, another $30,000 watch. To follow with that GMT, he also has one of my personal favorites as well, is the GMT yellow gold SANR. This is the one that brings the diamonds with the black stones on the bezel with the diamond lugs as well. It's almost pretty much considered the brother or the sister of the Saru, one of my favorite GMTs of all time. MJ also has one of the heavy hitting Daytonas of the lineup, which is the standard platinum. Great looking watch, and personally, I think it's one of the best watches he wears out of his collection. Something like that will set you back $75,000. Another thing I noticed is he has a 36 millimeter day date platinum with diamond dial and diamond lugs. Interesting thing about that watch is when I was watching the Last Dance series on HBO, I noticed that Rodman when they were showing clips of back then from 1997, 98, was also wearing a similar watch. One thing I wanna say is back then in the mid 90s, that was considered a heavy piece. So there's no doubt in my mind that he possibly has a couple more Rolexes in that lineup, but that's pretty much what I was able to capture just based on all the images online. So for Rolex, I think he's got that well rounded out, but let's get into more of the eccentric models that he likes. So Jordan also likes IWC. He happens to have a big pilot in platinum with the blue dial, blue strap. Great looking watch, something like that is around $30,000 retail, more or less. He also has an IWC big pilot in rose. Now this one's a bit more of a special edition, 250 pieces, $35,000 more or less. He continues from there with a Roger Dubois Excalibur Spider Pirelli, which the strap is actually made of Pirelli tires. Something like that, $72,000, well fit. Now, this is what really caught my attention when I saw that episode on The Last Dance. I said, he would wear something like that. You know, that's the type of watch that he likes. He likes something that's not the normal stuff. And I noticed that while watching that series also, along with his cars and selections of suits and clothes and stuff of that nature. Interesting point was that Scottie Pippen also had in RD. I found that very just, I don't know if it was coincidental, I don't know if it was just maybe like a plug in the series, maybe a sponsor. You know, he was rocking a flying tourbillon that's $300,000, but I found that pretty coincidental, wanted to point that out. Interesting enough, he owns a couple of Panerais, nothing too crazy, you know, 144 millimeter Luminar, but of course he has a variety. As the long list of eccentric watches go on, we're gonna move on into the Ulysses Nardons. He has a Sonata leather strap, interesting piece for him. You know, that's something more to wear with a suit. I think it's a good watch, $60,000. Another thing I saw on these images, on Getty images and stuff like that was he had a royal blue tourbillon. Problem is that I was only able to find it with the full diamond pave and the picture wasn't the best one, but it really looked like the one that he had didn't have diamonds. Again, another very, Interesting pick from the Jumpman. Another brand that he has a watch, which I wouldn't doubt he has a couple more, I just wasn't lucky enough to find it, will be a Langa and Sone. You know, he has a Datagraph Platinum that runs 90,700, the one with the full metal band. Again, very interesting choice. Most people, when they buy that brand, they usually go for the leather strap. I just feel like that's one of those watches that I personally like better with a leather strap. Fair enough though, great choice. So before I touch more of the showcases of his collection, I wanna mention that Jordan has a Richard Mill. I found that very interesting. He has an RM32 rose gold. These are the round design diver looking RMs. I really thought he would maybe just jump into one of the more 
wild looking ones from the collection. But I don't know, that's the one he likes. Something like that will set you back $130,000. So last but not least, the showcases of Air Jordan's collection. And that's gonna be the brand Earwork. He tends to like those because he wears them a lot. And he's got four of them based on what I can see from the images. Let's start with the UR202, something like that. Very nice, will set you back $90,000. He also has a UR202S, which seems to be my favorite one just because the color that it has, all one titanium looking finish, $145,000. He also has a UR203, $150,000. And last but not least, a UR103, one of the earlier versions, $45,000. I mean, that's a kind of brand that's very eccentric looking. The only other thing I could say that's as crazy looking as that brand would be perhaps maybe an MBNF. It's a very, very weird looking, out of the ordinary looking watch, which fits MJ style. All right, so when it comes to sum it all up and give him a score, I would say that Michael Jordan is not really the jump man of the watch game. Now I had to be, you know, it was not an easy score, but I would say that based on the fact that he's got very eccentric pieces, and one of the main things that I wanna mention is, is that this score would be compared to all the other celebrities that I have reviewed that have some star-studded lineup pieces. You know, how do you compete against a guy that's got all these hard to reach, heavy, heavy pieces? I would say that Michael Jordan has a seven, okay? And don't get me wrong, just because somebody has a seven, doesn't mean they have a weak collection. It just means that there's three more levels beyond that and he's just simply not there. I thought it was very interesting to see how his personality carries on into his watch choices. He has so much of a weird variety of different pieces, but most importantly, he likes and wears them all. I tend to feel that Jordan is not so much of a competitive collector and has them more just because he likes them for him. You know, let's face it, when you get into the watch game, you like watches, but you like to compete a little bit. You wanna have the next piece that's hard to get, the next heavy hitter, the next super stunner, so on and so forth. And truly, his collection is in a league of its own. So thank you for watching, and comment below how you feel about MJ's watch collection. And if you like this video, please like and share. Also, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to check out my new TikTok account where I'm gonna be posting interesting short clips about watches every day.